Okay. Hi everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our How to Enroll Couch to College session. This morning's session is going to be presented by Paula, um, who is our Director of Planning and Performance. She's going to join us in a moment. Um, in the meantime, we'll start we'll start the session in a, in a few moments' time. Um, if you've got any questions now or at any point during the session, you can pop them in the, the live Q&A box, which is on the right of the screen. Thanks very much for that. So good morning, everybody, and welcome to this session of enrolling at the Manchester College. So I'm going to take you through the steps that you will take to enrol here at the college. As you know, you've made an application to the Manchester College and you're now going to follow um, a series of, of stages to go through our enrolment process. I'm going to talk you through, obviously you've made your application and you've got an offer and you're now in the get ready for college stage, which is here in your next steps. So when you log back into your portal, you will see this on the front screen and you'll click get ready. You'll then be obviously presented with your personal details page. Obviously, you've already given us these details. So what we're asking you to do here is just cross check, ensure that all these details are correct and then move to the next screen. Again, this is your emergency contact details your address and your correspondence address if they were different. We then move on to residency and if you've been in the EU or UK for the last three years you just click yes here. If you haven't you'll click no and answer the following series of questions. You'll also fill out your equal opportunities, nationality, ethnicity, and if you have any criminal convictions and so on. Once you've completed this screen, you'll then move through to if you need any help and support whilst here at our college, um, whilst you're obviously on your course, you may well need some support, such as if you have an educational health or care plan. That's Please don't worry about this, just ensure that we know that you've got one and we will then contact you and ensure that you have everything available when you start your course. We want to make sure that we've made the reasonable adjustments that you will need and, then, and ensure that you've got all of the right support in place on the start date of your course. Then move through to qualifications updates. So you've already given us your predicted grades, but obviously on GCSE results day and ready for your appointment with the tutor, we will need to ensure that you've actually added your fully um, your grades that you've actually received from your GCSEs. Um, and obviously we'd want you to go back in and enter those here. Once you've done that, you'll click continue and you'll move through to evidence uploads. Here we'll want you to take a photograph of your statement of entry, ensuring that your name is clearly visible and then upload that photograph into our upload section here. Once you've completed all of those statements of entries and uploaded them, then you'll move across to the next section, which is data protection. You've already entered these details at your application, so it's just to make sure that you're still happy with what you've put down here, whether you want to be contacted by email, post, SMS, and agreeing to the terms and conditions of the GDPR data protection consent. Once you're happy with that, you'll click continue and you'll move through to the next section, which is to review again all of the information that's in the system to make sure that you're happy with it and you'll review it. And if there is any further editing to be done, that's absolutely fine. Once you're happy with it, then you can click submit. Once you've completed that, you'll then be taken back to the front screen, as you can see here, and you're then into, again, next steps to, to book your preferred enrolment time. You'll see here there are a number of slots. You can book a slot between 9.30 and 11, which will mean you'll receive a call between 9.30 and 11.30 from your tutor 
to finalise your course and any other questions that you may have that you may want to ask at that time. On the day, the tutor will then contact you, talk through obviously the course, your grades and ensure that everything is still correct for you. And if not, and you didn't get the grades you wanted or you have better grades, we will then ensure we get you on the right course for you. So please don't worry about that. On the day, our dedicated tutor that looks after you will have the experience and knowledge to ensure you get onto the right course that best suits your grades. Once you've completed that with the tutor, we'll then ask you to log back into your enrolment portal and you'll see the study programme that you've been enrolled on and the learning agreement that you're signing up to to come to the college for. Once you're happy with that and everything's in place, you'll then tick the boxes to agree, as you can see here, and sign to say that you're happy with the enrolment. And once that's completed, that's you fully enrolled. Thank you. Brilliant, thanks for that, um, Paula. Um, we did have a few uh, technical issues just at the beginning, and I think we've just had a question just from someone who just says, it just says, how, how does my daughter enroll onto the course she's been accepted onto? Obviously, you have just covered that. Um, I just wondered if you could just start with the very beginning of the process and just talk through where they go to to enroll onto that course. Uh, just, yes, you know, don't, don't have to go through all of it, but just that beginning bit. Yeah, of course. So, as I said, all of the learners have made an application to the Manchester College, which is obviously how we have all the details and how we've made an offer. Or they may have visited the campus throughout the, obviously whilst we were open before the COVID pandemic, people did get the opportunity to come visit us on campus. The learner has an application account, which is called Prospect Portal. And in there, they made their application, they've been made an offer and all of their related communications, if they want to review them with parents, are in there, which obviously tells you what the offer is, when the offer was made, and basically the next steps will get an email from the college through the portal and a text message to say, we're now ready in the enrolment phase for your learner to log back on um, and actually go into the next phase, which is get ready for studies, which is here, and that's in the portal homepage. When the learner logs on, this is what they will see and we're in the enrolment ready stage. So the learner will click on here and again work through those personal screens ensuring that the data that we've already collected is, is still correct. They've not moved house, they've not changed their mobile telephone number. You know, all of the rate related information, they'll be asked for further information such as their next of kin email address and other key information, as I've said, and their grades and to upload their obviously statements of entries from school is a photograph with their name visible and obviously a photograph for their ID card and in there it gives clear instruction on how to do that it's a passport style photograph we're looking for so this system will work the learner through each of those aspects and the communication that we send them talks about the stages that the learner will go through so we're hoping that that's clear. But if there is any questions when you receive that communication, please just pick up the phone to the college, give us a ring and one of the team on course inquiries will be able to help them with any questions or concerns they may need to answer in. That, that's great. Thanks, Paula. And um, again, another question relating to that, um, someone asking when or where do we get the enrolment form from? Um, but obviously that's now online. So is it a specific URL or will it just come through via the text or email that you mentioned there? So as I said, when, when they log back into the portal, I'll just whiz back to the beginning, okay. um, they'll log back into their application and enrolment portal, Prospect, which is what it's called, and they will then see the Get Ready for College communication. So the details that you can see that I've just gone through is the enrolment form. Um, we are Obviously, when we collect the information on their application, that starts the that basically starts the process of their application, which then converts into their enrolment form. And the reason we send this back out is so that we have other data that we need to collect. Now they're going to be a student with us 
to ensure that we've got things ready for them when they start, that we can get their timetable to them. We make sure if they've got any supported learning needs, we can ensure that things are ready for them when they start with us. So this now is a verification and additional information that we will need from the learner. It also does an equality and diversity questionnaire, which is on the further information link, which we'll send to the learner as well. So in the communication that comes to the learner, the steps are also detailed and outlined in that communication. Great, F fantastic. So just need to wait for those, those that communication, then you can uh, yeah. then you can log in and, and get all that sorted and go through the process. Fantastic. Yeah. And we're okay. hoping that that's going to be early August when they'll start to receive those communications. Great. Yeah. So there's another question here actually relating to that. Um, does my daughter have to wait until she gets the GCSE results before she can enroll on her course? So she'll have completed her enrolment form. She'll have done all of her EDI questionnaire and all of the pre-paperwork will be already done. So on the morning of GCSE results day, as it explains in the communication letter, it will say um, on GCSE results day, log back into your portal and update your predicted qualifications, which is this section here. I'll just go back to it for people so they can see. So you'll go back into the portal, you'll click here onto the qualifications tab here, and then you will update your predicted qualifications to your actual grades, and you will then click continue. Fantastic. Then it's ready for when you get on the call with the tutor, the tutor has all of the information that they can then make sure you're on the right course for you. Okay. Brilliant. And um, for the question here, what happens if I, I miss my appointment? So if you miss your appointment, that's absolutely no problem. We understand that people have busy lives and things change. They're, all they need to do is call the college on the number that's on the website and on the portal. Every time they log in, it's visible and just basically explain I've missed my appointment slot and the team will rebook them a slot that's convenient for them. OK. Brilliant. Um, and if, if someone were to want to change their mind on the course that they've selected, can they can they do that? How does that work? So if somebody's changed their mind, um, again, they can change their mind now and they can get on the phone to us and we'll ensure that that's all ready for them. So when they do do their get ready for comms, obviously peace and that they're going to update their form, that we can ensure that that course has been changed for them. And then subject to their grade, the leveling will be decided on the day. So that's not a problem anyway. We, we envisage, you know, that people will have changed their mind. They may not get the grades they wanted or they may get better grades. You know, we have um, a combination of that when learners come to us and it's really not a problem. We're here to ensure that we get learners on the right career path for them. OK, brilliant. Um, I've had a question here about about um, will it will it affect my place because I didn't sit out my GCSEs. I'm not quite sure. It's not that clear that one, but um, no. yes, I understand. You've got what that, you've got yeah. So that means because obviously they're not going to get a physical examination result like most learners right. sit at GCSE at the end of year, which is a national exam sat on the same day across the country. That is obviously that's the same for every person who is 16 and leaving school this year. That will not affect their place the predicted grade that they will get will be off their assessments and work that they did at school. And we envisage that learners may not get the grade that they wanted and could have actually achieved at the time. But obviously we are here to ensure that we get them on the right course that will best suit their needs. And if anyone's got any questions, please discuss that with the tutor at your appointment. You know, we're here to ensure that you get the best from your learning experience at the Manchester College. Great, right, fantastic. OK, so there's two questions here, a uh, similar sort of theme. Um, what's the date of the enrolment? Is there a specific date that they can expect to see receive the communications? And, and yeah, the other question is, when will the portal become available? OK, so as I said, the portal's live now and has been all year, but the enrolment phase will start in early August. So they will receive their comms in early August. We're hoping that's going to be coming out the week of the 3rd of August. That's that's our plan date. So they'll receive a communication and a text message saying we, we've now moved into our enrolment phase. Please log back in. And in there will be the full letter explaining 
obviously all of the stages that they're going to go through. Once they log back on, they'll go into the enrollment stage and they'll go to get ready, fill the form out, they'll submit the form, then they will book their appointment slots and their appointments are, are running from the 20th of August at lunchtime, which is GCSE results day, right the way through to the 28th of August and they can pick a slot that best suits them during that time. Their place is secure, so you know, please pick a slot once these um, availabilities come out and we will make sure we get to you during that slotted time. Okay, great. Um, next question is, will the Manchester College be at, at, at my, my daughter's school on the day she receives her GCSE results? There, there is a possibility, but I think um, if you take, if we can get the learner's name, we can ask um, the school's team which schools they're going to be in and maybe we could publish that on the website. It's something we could do because Carl will have that information now of the schools he's going into. Yeah. OK, fantastic. So if, yeah, if, you, if, if that person does that, if they can send another comment, we'll uh, we'll keep that private and we'll... we'll um, yes, please. Yeah, and then them. we can let them yeah. know um, privately through a direct message. Yeah. OK, um, question here about the about the portal. It's um, saying they don't... What happens if my, my portal doesn't have an application on it? So if you've not already made an application, it's not too late. You know, log into your portal, make your application and then you will get the get ready for college communications. So please don't worry that you've not made an application now. We're still here, um, we're still working and we're still making sure that we're making offers to our learners and we will ensure that you get through the process as smoothly as possible. Okay, great. Uh, um, just having a few technical difficulties. Can you just, um, you, you there Paula? Yes. Yes, yes, that's fine. It just went a bit quiet there, that's fine. Sorry. Um, so right, no worries. Um, so the next question is, I'm whole, homeschooled and I haven't I haven't done GCSEs. Uh, what do I do? That's OK. So if you've been homeschooled and you've got no formal qualifications, we do something that's called an initial assessment to see your levels of attainment. So you will obviously go through an assessment process and then be given the right course for you. So you know that we have lots of people who come to us who don't have any prior attainment and that means you've got no formal written qualifications, certifications. So, you know, that's OK. And we're used to dealing with that. Um, so, you know, if that's the case, make your application and just declare you don't have any formal qualifications and then we will obviously contact you. And during that um, interview slot, you will be given the right advice about what the next steps would be. But if that person wants any help, then if they can um, obviously direct message us or call the call centre, then we can obviously facilitate the application with them now and help them through the process. Great. And we have we have put the number there on the chat screen if if you uh, if you want to give the give the number the, the call centre a call to discuss any questions you've got. Yes, and uh, they're they're already waiting now. So yeah, there's somebody perfect. there now. So once this session finished, please give them a call and they will obviously help you through. They'll talk you through the course choices, um, you know, what you might be interested in, and then you can apply for the course that you're interested in, then we can get the level incorrect at enrolment. Okay, brilliant. Okay, the next question is, um, when I enrolled, do I tell the college I need to do fun functional skills? When does that, that come into play? Into play? So obviously we will look at your English and maths level of attainment and depending upon the grades that you receive, we will tell you what functional skill or reset a GCSE you will be required to do. There is a structure for English and maths, so the tutor will discuss that with you on the morning of your appointment or the afternoon or the evening. OK, great. Um, do student IDs get posted out or, or do we collect them? So on the first day that you come into our campus, obviously you'll be given a, a timetable. Some of it will be virtual online teaching and some of it will be campus based. It'll be a mixed approach. When you first attend the college, you will be given your student ID card because we have to verify that that is you. But your card will be ready when you come onto campus. That's why we're asking you to upload your photograph so that we can prepare that card for you. OK, great. Um, the next question is, how, how do we get um, the learner number? Will this be on the GCSE results? 
So your learner number for the college is going to be given to you on your student ID card. Your unique learner number is something that travels with you from school and that will be brought into our systems through the learner record service. Right, OK, great. Um, a question here about about the um, the enrollment process again. So do do they do they ring? Do they? Sorry, let me start again. Do students receive a call from us or do we do they do they ring us um, on, on enrollment day? OK, so once the learner books their slot, so you can see I've moved back to the booking your appointment screen here, you'll book a slot between 9.30 or 11.30 or between 1 and 3.30 or th th sorry, 3.30 to 6.30. Once your slot is booked, you'll get confirmation that your slot is, is obviously now in the diary and the tutor will call you in, in that two hour time frame. So what we're asking is that the learner makes themselves available between 9.30 and 11.30 if that's the slot that they book or between 1 and 3.30 or vice versa, as you can see here. It's a two hour window so that we can obviously get learners um, in, in a place where we will call them during that time. OK. That's great, fantastic. And um, the next question is, I have two two portal accounts, one with an application and one without. Do I just leave the one without? Yes, and use the one with the application on. Yeah, OK, great. Um, will we another one on um, on college ID cards? Will we will we get instructions on how to use the college ID card? I presume when you enroll. Yes, so we have security barriers in some of our campuses. We have um, obviously some some learners have a bursary, so the card in, you know there'll be money loaded onto the card if they're on free school meals, or they have obviously if we um, have bus bus tickets. Eventually, we are, we're in the process of. Um, introducing smart ticketing so that actually your bus ticket will be loaded onto the card once we've finished our developments for that. So the, there will be an induction plan which will be on our student hub but the reception team who are at our front of house will also be able to obviously ask ask them any questions and they'll be able to answer those for you. Okay you mentioned there the bursaries and, and things like that Um, we've had a question about how do we apply for the college study award? Okay so obviously once you are a student with us on the student hub we are going to land the bursary information there but we'll also be able to have um, forms sent out to people's home address so we're intending to send a bursary application form to all learners in our student portal so they have that information prior to coming to the college they can review the details and if they think they're eligible they can complete the form and once they're on campus hand that in at reception okay great we'll uh, be the, assessed then and if they're eligible we'll write to them fantastic great um another one about about um cards i have a student card already from study studying the home ed english and maths classes and um, will i require a new card or will i just keep the one that i've already got so if they're a progressing student and they were with us last year, their card will continue to work once they re-enroll with us. So that card stays with them through the life of their study. Great, fantastic. Um, and then it looks like this is, might be the last one. I might have a couple more questions, but um, the last question I can see is what happens if I don't get the grades I'm predicted? We, we have that a lot. So obviously learners might get some grades that they wanted, but not others. So that may mean that we need to reevaluate your um, course level. And that's no problem. At the Manchester College, we have progression routes from entry level three right through to level level four, five, six, seven. Obviously, you can stay with us into our university part of USEN Manchester. So, you know, we, we don't see that as an issue here. We, we will review have another conversation, we'll look at the career path and we will ensure that we get you on the right course for the career that you've chosen. Fantastic. So I think the last last question really or last thing to maybe um, ask you just to reiterate is the the, the process of enrolling and, and the dates when when they can expect to receive communication. I think that's that's the last thing. Yeah, I'll go through it again. Yeah. So I, I, I envisage that you'll start to receive the communications from the 3rd of August onwards. This will be in the form of a text message that will say we've now moved into our enrolment phase. Please log back in 
to your application portal. Once you log into your portal, you'll see a new communication. You'll get it on email and as well. The communication will be in the form of a, of a letter which will take you through the stages. Um, and then you will log back in and go to the get ready. Once, you, once you've done that, it'll take you through to booking your slot, which is this piece here. And once you've booked your slot, you'll wait for GCSE results day. You'll update your qualifications and then the tutor will ring you at the dedicated slot time and finalise the course and other questions, queries that you may have. Brilliant, fantastic. We just had one last question come through. Um, the question is, what is the Student Hub? So the Student Hub is where the, your timetable will be. So when you're in college, whether you're being virtually taught, in there it will be if you have um, print credits, for instance, on our printing facilities, that will be there. So the Student Hub is a landing page of all information that's relevant for students um, there's all sorts of really interesting things on there and obviously information about your course. OK, and we have just had one more in while I've well, just been talking to Paula, yeah. so sorry about that. Um, last no, one no, is, uh, will my ID card work between different campuses? Mine's for Sheen Assignment and not Openshaw. If you move into another campus because you've progressed to another campus, then your card will work on the campus you're enrolled on. Yeah. Brilliant. OK, I think that looks like all the questions. So um, thanks for your time today, Paula, and thank you everyone for, for joining us today. I hope you found it useful and, and um, yeah, looking forward to seeing you in September. Um, if you'd like to find out even more about the Manchester College, we do have a few more live online Couch to College events taking place today and tomorrow. Um, we've got a session later this afternoon from our employability team on how to promote yourself to employers through social media. And um, we also have a session tomorrow from our student experience team on what it's like being a student at the Manchester College. Um, to find out more about those sessions and to register, just visit tmc.ac.uk and click Couch to College. Um, and with all that said, once again, I just want to say thank you very much for attending today and we look forward to welcoming you in September. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone.